We have done the approximation up to now that uh, as compressors inlet, because we want to be fully vapor, uh, we can take uh, saturated vapor uh, at compressors inlet, so at point A. In reality, uh, this is not exactly possible. Uh, the first reason uh, is because uh, the, the flow uh, that is going out of the evaporator is usually not completely homogeneous. So if uh, the average state is uh, at saturation, there will be uh, probably a mix of uh, droplets and superheated uh, vapor too. Uh, and uh, that's not good for the compressors uh, if there are uh, droplets uh, that are going uh, inside the compressor. Uh, the second reason uh, for what I will be showing here is uh, in terms of efficiency in order to increase a little bit the efficiency but we'll go back to this when we'll do uh, the energetic analysis. So the idea is uh, that uh, we want to superheat uh, the compressor's uh, inlet. Superheat means uh, we want to increase uh, the temperature a bit higher than the saturation temperature uh, from the pressure at which uh, things are taking place, so the low temperature, uh, the low pressure. Uh, so we can look, for example, at this uh, on the pH diagram. Uh, so point D is somewhere there at the inlet of the evaporator, and then uh, the fluid will completely evaporate uh, at uh, evaporation uh, temperature, which is uh, the saturation temperature corresponding to low pressure. Uh, but we want to increase a little bit more at constant pressure the temperature uh, of the exit uh, of the evaporator uh, in order to uh, avoid having droplets if the flow is not uh, fully homogeneous. Because uh, uh, the working fluid is exchanging heat or receiving heat from the cold source uh, there's a limit that cannot be reached. Uh, we cannot uh, go beyond uh, the cold temperature, so the temperature of the cold source. So uh, usually uh, the superheat will fix an inlet temperature of the compressor that is uh, somewhere between uh, the evaporator temperature and uh, the cold source temperature. So somewhere there, for example. And uh, so what we call superheating, uh, the superheat corresponds to this difference of temperature. So that's uh, what we call the superheat of superheating. And so this corresponds to a difference of temperature. So superheating is a difference at some pressure. We can see the same thing, uh, for example, on the TS diagram, and in that case, we can write uh, the difference at some pressure of superheating this way. And so it means uh, that uh, point A, so the inlet of the compressor, will not be there, but there, so at the cross section between the low pressure uh, isobaric line and uh, the uh, this temperature that corresponds uh, to uh, T evap plus uh, delta T of superheating. And this would be point A. So that's something we do in vapor compression uh, real cycles.